Rub up your engines! Here's a Mercedes SLK. This baby was $60,000, right? He bought it for 25 with 15,000 miles on it. That shows you their resale values, they plummet. But with that low mileage on it, there's a lot of life left in this car for sure. Yeah, they're beautiful cars. And of course, they're chock full of technology. But the guy who bought this is a mechanic who likes fiddling around with stuff. He's added a camera in the front, why? So he doesn't smash this expensive piece of plastic that's the front of the car. Got nice plastic shields for the headlights. Price some of those babies out. Those headlights cost a fortune too. Now, this is not a car for the non-mechanical person to buy unless they have an awful lot of money. That's just how Mercedes are. But this guy likes messing around with his. He's put modules in it so he can even change the fuel injection system on the fly on this thing. Now, you know I'm not a Mercedes fan. I always warn people about buying, especially used. But this guy's a mechanic and check it out. This beautiful coupe was made where? It was made in Stuttgart. Yeah, in Germany. Now it's beautiful inside, there's no doubting that. It's got that metal drop box top. Start the engine up. A nice smooth idle. You get 34 miles a gallon in a sports car that goes this fast. The Germans have many interesting ideas. There's no arguing that. As I said, they're beautiful looking cars, but of course they perform. And of course it's got this wild automatic drop top not canvas it's nice and quiet when you're riding around on like a canvas top and here we go the magic of German technology Now, yeah, a lot of technology to take the top down. It's a long way from the old Willys Jeep of World War II where you just flip the windshield down. But then again, we won and they lost. <laughs> now, of course, it's got this beauty cover on it. To me, it's a complete waste of time on a beautiful machine to cover it up. Why do you want to cover it up? You want to see what you got. Okay, with well, the turbocharger, puts out 241 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque because the turbo gives it a lot more torque. So it's got plenty of get up and go. But since it's a four-cylinder engine, as you can see, it actually has working room. Look at the oil filter. It's right there. You don't have to crawl under the car. The battery's under here and it has a little fan to cool it. It has three modes, economy, regular, sport. They can change the timing, the cam timing, the fuel injection spray. Now understand the owner is a retired pilot for American Airlines. So he likes technology and he likes going fast. Of course, he has the insanely bright headlights that they claim are brighter than the sun at noon. They will follow you around auto dimming. There's technology up the wazoo. Of course, it's got anti-lock brakes. Long past anti-lock brakes in this thing. And he even owned BMWs, but they were motorcycles. He worked on them himself. Oh, he did own a Bavaria. Of course, back in the day, they were a lot simpler than they were today. I had customer with a Bavaria that had 400,000 miles, and it was still running like a clock. BMW made much better vehicles back in the past than they do today. So what are you going to get these days for 20 something thousand dollars? Well, if you're a gambling man and you can find one with really low mileage, hey. Remember last year I had a guy bring a Lotus in. He paid less than half of what the Lotus cost new and it had 2,500 miles on it. If you want to gamble with high tech, go low mileage used. Their resale values plummet. I mean, he's gone wild. He's put an air horn. He's put the lit star on it. He's done all kinds of stuff. He's having fun. Hey, since he saved over 35 grand, he can put a lot of toys on it. <laughs> and he's still way, way below the curve on this one. We got the top going here. Now we're going to put it up because I can't film with the top down. All you're going to hear is the air. Now the first thing you're going to notice is it's relatively low to the ground. So it really hugs the road. And for a small wheelbase car, it's got a nice smooth ride. They've got all kinds of technology in their suspension systems. Really, I'd never guess that you'd get a car with a wheelbase this small that would ride this well. Now I'm putting it in sport mode, so it'll go a little zippier, stiffens up the suspension. Yes, marvels of technology. You wouldn't want to own this thing when it gets to be really old and high mileage, unless you like spending all your day messing around with electronics. But <laughs> they all work now. It's only got 19,000 miles on it. Now here we come to our little testing range. Let's see what this thing can do. 
There goes the turbo. Smooth shifts. You really wouldn't think it's a four-cylinder engine, let me tell you. It's fun to drive. And a big advantage is with a four-cylinder engine, this thing's got a really good weight balance. With the V8, it didn't have too much weight in front of the car. This is perfectly balanced. It's really a fun car. It's kind of like a Mazda Miata on steroids <laughs> with a lot more technology. <laughs> are the Germans anal? Yes, they are. This car has one, two, three clocks. And strangely enough, that one, when it's time change, it twirls around by itself to the hours. Now, there's the Germans for you. Now, sure, I warn people about technology and Mercedes, but really, for 20-something grand, with 15,000 miles on it, <laughs> and it runs like it does, it's a beautiful toy. There's no arguing that. He could sell it for a lot more if he wanted to, but it's this fun toy. He's retired now. He used to fly airplanes. He even keeps it in economy mode because he likes getting better gas mileage. I'm sure this thing will last a long time, being made in Stuttgart. And truthfully, if you get the Mercedes sports cars that have the V8 engines, it doesn't matter what size the car is. They're gas hawks because they're big old V8 engines. These four bangers can last a long time. Change the oil regularly. This thing's in immaculate shape. Of course, it doesn't have any miles on it either. As long as you keep insurance on it because of all those electronics if it gets flooded out man hey, there's ten fifteen thousand dollars right there but as long as you keep it insured a car like this can be a lot of fun now yes he's retired so he's older like me he pays 600 bucks a year on the insurance on this thing so don't be surprised that you could save money if you buy a nice car especially when you're older and retired or conversely if you're buying a really old car that's a classic car, more than 25 years old, you can get insurance that's even cheaper as long as you drive less than 5,000 miles a year. Always look into that when you're buying a car. You might really be surprised. You might think, oh, it's a Mercedes. Man, it's gonna kill me for the insurance. Not necessarily, cause it's got a four cylinder engine in it. There's a lot of advantages to those other than gas mileage. I gotta say, this thing's even got me tempted. For that kind of money, it'd be a fun toy. I'm sure the wife would love it as long as I'm the one who's doing the fixing. <laughs> There's no way I could get a sport Lexus in that price range with that kind of mileage. Whew, I'd be paying two to three times that. <laughs> and even though it's a four, it's got dual exhaust. So you're thinking about an SLK 300 and technology doesn't scare you? At least get a low mileage one like he did. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, you worry about electric car range. Toyota just proved you don't have to worry about hydrogen electric range. Of course, you would have to worry about where you're going to get the hydrogen from, but that's another story. The Toyota Mirage just set an 845-mile record in California driving around without having to refuel. They filled it up with hydrogen, sealed the tank, and it went 845 miles before it ran out of hydrogen. And if you've ever seen a Toyota Mirage, it's an actual car. You know, it's not some fantasy little thing that they're using for a test for gas mileage the students made in the college. No, it's an actual car. One of the guys at the top gear, the original English guy, he said in England, it was the best car he ever had. But on the other hand, he got rid of it because he said it was such a pain getting hydrogen for it. <laughs> so it went 845 miles over the course of two days driving it around. And it got the equivalent of 152 miles per gallon too. They're very efficient because they fuel cell cars. They use hydrogen, turn into electricity. And of course, the only pollution they put out is water vapor and some heat. It was 2016 that the first Toyota Mirai was sold in the United States in California. So it's been around for a while. You know, hydrogen fuel cell cars are interesting. The only problem is getting the fuel. It doesn't take long to fuel them up because liquid hydrogen just goes in. It's a liquid. It's fast, right? Just like filling your car up with gasoline. The problem, of course, is getting the hydrogen. It's got to have an infrastructure, and who knows if or when that's ever going to occur. They obviously have a long range. Me, as I've said many times, I think that that's the future in the beginning for big trucks. Germany already has the entire country covered with hydrogen stations for the big 18-wheeler trucks, and they claim that already per million miles driven, it'll cost the same as diesel trucks. So start big, think small later maybe, because we're going to build thousands and thousands of hydrogen fueling systems. I can't see that happening anytime soon. Commercially, yeah, totally viable. They know where they're going. They got it set up. Germany's already got the whole country covered. But actual people driving them, yeah. You think electric cars are a problem. They got to generate the electricity, right? Here, not only do they have to create the hydrogen, then they got to have stations to put the hydrogen in. It's interesting science, but as for practical applications, it's going to be a long time before there's hydrogen cars, that's for sure. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.